The Battle of Yongjiahen was fought during the aftermath of World War II in the Yongjiahen region of central Anhui, China between communist forces and Kuomintang forces who had allied with the Japanese. The battle was part of the Chinese Civil War, resulting in a victory for the People's Liberation Army. Chapter 1, Prelude Like similar clashes between the communists and nationalists in the aftermath of World War II in China, the battle was partly due to the realization by Kuomintang leader Chiang Kai-shek that his regime had neither sufficient troops or transportation to allow him to deploy in the Japanese-occupied regions of China. Since the communists could expand their territory by accepting the Japanese surrender, Chiang ordered the Japanese not to surrender to the communists. This would maintain order in the Japanese-controlled regions and help fight off the communists until the arrival and deployment of Kuomintang troops. As a result of this order, most members of the Japanese military forces rejoined the nationalists. However, most of these forces were not from Jiang's own circle. They were primarily war troops only nominally under Jiang's command before the war, they were Kuomintang in name only and maintained much of their autonomous status. These warlords were primarily interested in maintaining their own power, and defected to the Japanese when Japan offered to let them retain their power in exchange for collaboration. After World War II ended, these forces returned to the Kuomintang for the same reason they had defected. For Chiang, it was difficult to sever his relationship with the warlords, this would alienate other factions within the nationalist ranks, and the warlords were still useful to him. Zhang's objectives, therefore, were to solve the problems of the warlords and the communists, by the end of the civil war, this proved impossible. Chapter 2, Nationalist Strategy Even if the communists were able to take control of the Japanese-occupied territories, this would still be beneficial to Chiang. The communists were strong enough to greatly reduce the strength of the warlords, at the same time the communists would be weakened by the fighting, making it easier for the Kuomintang to prevail. The warlords gladly followed Jiang's orders, and they were eager to prove themselves. They were aware that, due to their collaboration with the Japanese during the Second Sino-Japanese War, they were hated by the general Chinese population. The order from Chiang not to surrender, and to fight the communists, was a lifeline for them. Chapter 3, Communist Strategy The communist strategy was simpler than that employed by the Kuomintang, since there were no large divisions within the communist ranks. They had already earned considerable popular support as the only Chinese force left in the region actively fighting the Japanese after the withdrawal of the nationalists. After successfully establishing communist bases in rural areas, life there was better for the general population than it was in regions held by the Japanese. Chapter 4, Order of Battle Chapter 4 Section 1, Nationalists Two battalions of the 4th Division One battalion of the County Self-Defense Regiment One regiment and one battalion of the 2nd Division Chapter 4 Section 2, Communists 7th Column of the New 4th Army 19th Brigade 1 Independent Regiment Chapter 5, Battle On August 16, 1945, the Communists decided to take Yongjiahen, in eastern Anhui, by force after two battalions of the 4th Nationalist Division and their Japanese allies refused to surrender. The 55th and 56th Regiments of the Communist 19th Brigade, assisted by the 7th Column, launched their assault on the town at dawn, by dusk, the town was under Communist control. The Nationalist and Japanese defenders suffered over 900 casualties, and the Communists captured three machine guns, one 60mm mortar and over 100 firearms. A few days later, on August 19, the 19th Brigade launched an assault on Yunkau in Hanson County, which was guarded by a regiment, and battalion of the Nationalist 2nd Division. The brigade took the town, after defeating its defenders and Nationalist reinforcements. This battle caused over 1,300 Nationalist, and 21 Japanese fatalities. 
98 nationalist troops and 21 Japanese troops were captured by the communists. Chapter 6, Outcome Like similar clashes immediately after World War II between the communists and the Kuomintang, this conflict demonstrated that Jiang's attempts to simultaneously solve the warlord and communist problems was an impossible task. Although the power of the warlords was weakened as their forces were defeated by the communists, any gains for the nationalists were negated by political fallout from their alliance with the Japanese.